Hello buddy Crow, back again with our pickups video. Now I'm going to kind of change the way I'm doing pickups videos a little bit. Now what I was doing was I was kind of gathering all the stuff that I'd picked together in like the last um, time since the pickup video, which in this case is like a month and a half ago or two months ago, I don't really know. Uh, and then I would do them all together. But what I notice is that I've been talking about the games a little bit more than I have been in the past. And what is happening is I'm getting these really, really long pickup videos, like 45 minutes long. In fact, the last whole bunch of them I've done, I think, have been like 45 minutes long at least. So um, what I kind of want to do is shorten those videos up. Now, I know a lot of people, um, I don't know if it's a lot of people, but people have messaged me saying, hey, I like the longer pickup videos. And I actually don't really mind. You had to wait until now, just when I started talking, to say something. Anyway. <laughs> um, but my problem is that when I hit, when I deal with such a long pickup video with all the editing and stuff, it really makes it harder to edit. So um, I'm thinking maybe a shorter video would be a, like more appealing to, to most people rather than a longer video. I know that when I see a lo really long video from somebody I want to watch a video from, uh, I don't have the time right then and there. I was like, I don't really w feel like watching a 45 minute video at that point and I'll save it for later but then maybe sometimes I might forget completely about it. So um, that's another reason why I'm gonna try and do these a little bit shorter. Uh, so this video, I'm only gonna do six games. Uh, these are really themed together. There's uh, four Atari 8-bit computer games here and also two Commodore 64 games. And I'll try to group together some videos like that. Now I, I also have like you know PS3, PS4 games, even a Saturn game here. I kind of want to group to those together in another video. And then you know anything that's DVDs or CDs or like my last pickups video, which was a, which was the plastics pickup. Those will be separate videos as well. I think. Um, you know I don't really think that a lot of people will watch the Blu-rays or pick DVD pickups. But you know what? Just to get those into a separate video, I think that'll be fine. And then I'll post these videos a minimum of one day apart. So I, if I see a pickup video, there might be one the next day or there might be one for another month. I don't know. It just depends on how I pick things up because, you know, I don't really pick things up to do these videos. And I don't think that's a good way to do it. It's just, just the way things happen and I like buying things. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I'm addicted to buying things. I don't know. But uh, hopefully by showing these off, I have good reasons why I bought these. So let's start off with um, the Atari 8-bit games. Now, if you, I think I'm naming the title of this video something like Left Cartridges? That's right. And that's what I have here is a whole bunch of uh, Atari 8-bit computer left cartridges. Even though only two of them actually say left cartridge on them, but I'll get to that. What had happened was there was an, um, I saw, an, I was looking for something on eBay. Something, um, I don't even think it was Atari 8-bit computer related, but then I ran across a game and then I checked out other things the seller was, was selling, and I bought all this stuff from the same seller. They weren't too badly priced, and um, it actually was some time ago, so I can't remember exactly the prices. I'll just kind of, um, you know, give me a second. I'll have, I'll pull this up, and I, that way I can pull up the prices too. Well, it was easy enough. I just had to pull up the eBay app on my phone, and there it is. The last couple of things I bought. So I'm going to start out first with uh, Jumpman Junior. Uh, this is by Epix uh, for the arcade bin. Now, I bought this not because I had this when I was a kid. I kind of remember um, seeing this on Apple IIe computers in school back in the day, and I really never really played it. Now, <laughs> that's just my memory. Maybe it never was out on Apple IIe. I'm pretty sure it was. But um, how much was this? Uh, it was $12.99, the asking price, and that's what I paid for it. I figured... Um, it looked like a good game. I've seen some clips of it before. But holy crap, is this game difficult. It's more difficult than I thought. What was really funny was that when you start up the game, it asks you what speed you want to play at. And I think you have options between 1 through 5. So I figured 1 was the slowest, 5 was the fastest. So I picked 1. And the game was moving so fast, the character at least, I think it may be just a character speed, was moving so fast that I couldn't control him at all. But then you know, I tried 5 and that was too slow. I think three was the happy medium setting for me, but basically you just run around. Uh, it's like a you know screen by screen platformer where you try to pick up all the items on the screen. I don't know what those items are, but you try and get them. Uh, I basically only made it. It took me forever to get past the first level, 
And then I finally uh, took a while to get past the second level with the electric floors. You run across certain s spots on the floor and you get uh, you start running slower. And then uh, there's no way I was passing the third level base. And I think I played for like a good hour, an hour and a half too. It, I you just really need to play that game a lot in order to know what you're doing. Uh, and then uh, the meantime, what makes the game even more difficult is that you, you have these little dots, I don't know what those are supposed to be, but they kind of float across the screen and if they see you, they kind of dart across the screen at you. And uh, that kind of, well, so if you're climbing a ladder and you see one come from the top, um, you kind of have to decide what you want to do because you can't really just jump off the ladder. You take, uh, you can die from falling from a very high height, which I think is non-existent. I mean, you have to jump, and then you have to land, like, at either the same height you jumped at or higher in order to live. If, you're, if you jump and you land a little bit lower than where you were, I think you die. But dying is kind of funny because you, like, tumble down the whole screen, and I think that's, that's kind of amusing in its own right. And then when you do succeed on a level, the screen kind of melts in a really cool effect. So I am glad I picked this up, and, um... <laughs> Yeah, it's an entertaining game. It'll work on the Atari 400 I have, or the Atari uh, XCGS. It'll work on everything, pretty much. So let's move on. I also picked... I, this might have been the game that I saw that I wanted to pick up. This game was kept getting recommended to me. For as long as I showed that I had Space Invaders on the Atari Epic computer, this is Deluxe Invaders by the Roxland Co uh, Corporation. So I don't know if this is actually licensed by Kaido or if it's just kind of a rip-off Space Invaders game. But it's a better Space Invaders game than the original Space Invaders game is, uh, at least on the Atari 8-bit. Because I never really liked the way that those um, this invader spit marched out of the spaceship. I, I really didn't like that. Now, I didn't know... Oh, this is one of the left cartridges. It says left cartridge at the top. Um, but this is one of those games where it seems like it's going to be the standard Space Invaders game at first. But then, uh, when you go through certain options, you find out that, oh, when you shoot certain invaders, they split in half, and now you got two smaller ones to contend with. So, it's not actually a port of Space Invaders, or even, you know what, I don't want to say it's even Space Invaders Deluxe, because I don't even know if that's a game that exists. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of Asteroids Deluxe, but um, Space Invaders Deluxe, I, that's something I'd have to look up. Um, I know that there have been other Space Invaders games where you shoot the Space Invaders and they split, but I don't know if um, if those were out by the time this came out or not. Maybe they have, I don't know. But it, it really isn't like the original Space Invaders game, and truth be known, I still like Space Invaders on the Atari 2600 better than this, but this is a much better version of the game than the one that was on the... Um, the original one uh, that was for the Atari computer, the one that's on for uh, the Atari 5200. Um, you have don't have as many options as you do in the Atari 2600 version, but you do have options to play pretty much normally. I think you could adjust the speed, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I can't really remember. It's actually been over a month ago since I played it and captured footage for it uh, from this time, but from this point in time. But um, yeah, you can make it as challenging as you want. Uh, basically, I think you have nine game modes, and each game mode is um, whether or not the how many space invaders split after you shoot them or whatnot. I can't remember. I think there's a speed option. I'm pretty sure there's a two-player option. I think I'm just gonna move on uh, to this next game that I got. This was. Now this is surprising. I mean, all these are from the same seller. Now, Space Invaders or Deluxe Invaders was $9.99. Jumpman Junior was $12.99. This was cheaper than both. This was $7.99. This is Demon Attack in the box for the Atari 400 now in 800. Now I was talking with Tony, uh, aka Electric Adventures, and um, I don't remember where. It might be Facebook, or it might have been on uh, some other YouTube video. I'm not sure. But it turns out that, um, th well, the original versions of this game, I'm, you know, it was on my Facebook page because I post pictures of uh, what I buy on Facebook before I even do these videos. But um, this will only work on the Atari 400-800. It will not work on my X uh, Atari XEGS. And I tested it out. It will not work. Apparently, there was a late, later revision of this where they had fixed that. But this is not one of those. But this, I am glad I bought this. Um, $8 for this. The box is awesome. 
uh, it's an awesome contingent box. Uh, this might have been the only iMagic game that they uh, made for the Atari computers. Uh, it has the, you know, the, the slide out. It's got the manual, which has not been uh, damaged in any sort of way. It even has the, um, the guide, the, the, the um, catalog. And the reason I say this may have been the only iMagic game released on the Atari 400 slash 800 is because in their catalog, it's the only one listed for the system. Uh, even has the warranty registration card, and then uh, again, here's the the box. The this is not crushed at all. This this plastic insert piece, very good condition. And then uh, again, the cartridge, the label uh, is beautiful. It really is. Even this is the other game where it says left cartridge at the top. Uh, I was really shocked when I got this because they didn't have all these pictures up. I just kind of. Uh, actually, they did. They had it uh, all out. One picture with everything all spread out. Uh, but honestly, I could not tell from the, the, the picture how good of a condition this was in. Um, this is this is really awesome. And this, I don't even think this game shows up on... Um, I guess there is a little bit of a, a damage in the corner here, just a little crease. But, um, you know, I'm not... I, I'm, sometimes I'm just happy to have a box. But to have a box in this good of a condition for this game... And seeing as how this might have been the only iMagic game that was ever released on the 400-800, again, I don't know that for 100% fact. Somebody might be even correcting me in the comments as we as I speak right now. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's an awesome box, too. I love the artwork and stuff. Um, but um, the game itself, the, one of the reasons I was attracted to buying this so much is because it seemed like every version of Demon Attack that iMagic put out was slightly different. We had the one for the Atari 2600, and then you had the one for the ColecoVision, you had the one for the Intellivision. Uh, they all seemed to be slightly different, like much like Atlantis was. Um, so like the Intellivision, Intellivision version had a boss. The ColecoVision vision version might have had the boss too. The Atari 2600 version did not have the boss. And I played this for a while, and I don't think that this has the boss level as well. In fact, this is very, very similar to the Atari 2600 version. In fact, I'm almost sorry to say I almost like the Atari 2600 version a little bit better because I, I think I like the way the sound effects are in that version over this one. That's not to say this is a bad game. This is still an excellent game. But it's just so close to the Atari 2600 version that it's disappointing. I, I have a feeling, feel like this should have been just a little bit better. But you know what? I'm not going to get rid of it. I love the box and everything. Um, I, I almost just want to have this almost as a trophy piece, as it were. But it is an excellent game in its own right. Um, but yeah, let's move on. This was the last one, and actually this may have been one of the ones that I saw that I was like, you know, this was the kicker. I had seen a couple other cartridges, but when I saw this one, I was like, that's the kicker. I gotta buy all of these. And that is... It's a game... Here's the funny. It's a game I thought was only on the Atari 2600. I thought the Atari... Did I say Atari 7600? It's a game I saw only on the Atari 7800. Um, I thought that was the only home release of this game. But I was wrong. Because for the Atari XE, there was released Food Fight. Uh, so I was like, there was Food Fight on the Atari computer XE. It should work with the XE and XL. Um, basically in this game, you are some kind of kid who wants an ice cream cone on the other side of the, the room, but all these chefs come out and everybody has a giant food fight, and your goal is just simply to get to the other side of the screen to eat that ice cream cone. But you can take out as many chefs that get in your way as possible as uh, you need to. Uh, Box is in pretty good condition, not as good as the Demon Attack. Um, the cartridge is in really good condition. It's kind of got a weird shape for an XE cartridge. It's got a little bit of a lip on the back here. I don't know what the purpose of that was. Maybe it was easier to grab out. But it doesn't have, like, the ridges or the Atari logo on the back that the other XE cartridges I do have. So it's kind of a weird cartridge in that respect. Um, also came with the, the manual um, and then off the registration card. So it came with everything, much like Demon Attack. I said, what did I say? I don't know if I said the price of this or not, but it was $15. But I had to have it because I liked... Food Fight so much. I mean, I played it a little bit in the arcade. Galloping Ghost has it. Um, and I have the Atari 7800 version because in that game it's fun to play. This, however, I don't think I want to play this again. Uh, I think I'll still keep it because I like Food Fight and this is complete in the box. But uh, the game runs at an 
a horrendous frame rate, you know? It's very almost unplayable just because of how slow everything goes and when there's a lot of stuff on the screen. Even when there's not a lot of stuff on the screen, it seems to kind of plot along and um, it could use some extra frames of animation in there and um, it's just not there. <laughs> um, now, I think that they'll, they'll cover the Atari stuff. Um, let's jump to the Commodore 64 stuff. This stuff was also, I also picked up on eBay, and you know, I was gonna say, I was gonna have to pause the video to find it, but it was actually right below some other stuff I bought. So first of all, I actually paid quite a bit of money for this, uh, well, $25 off, all things considered. But, you know what, it was the best price I could see for a completely priced uh, box of this game, and that is Demon Stalkers. Of course, it comes in the album case, uh, which is my favorite type of game uh, box ever like Archon, Archon 2, Ricks and Destruction set all came in these kind of boxes. It's almost complete. Uh, what I noticed is that, what's funny was that they had the, uh, didn't have uh, a sleeve on the disc yet. The disc works and everything. Um, no problems with the disc. But it didn't have the instruction manual, but instead it had something even more important, the cipher wheel. Uh, what is, yeah, Arthur's Magical Cipher. And what, this is more or less the copy to protection for the game. It'll let you play a couple levels of the game, but um, it'll stop in between levels and ask you, um, maybe after the first five, I didn't really make it that far in the game when I was playing it, but then it's like, oh, um, answer this question. And I didn't know the answer because it was like, who's the boss of the game? And I don't have the manual, but that wasn't important. I think that just gives you extra stats or whatever. But then it's like, okay, now find the cipher for this. And you type, you, you spin the wheel, you find the code, you put the code in, and it lets you continue. I don't know what happens if you don't have the code. Um, didn't try it. But this was a game I used to have as a, um, I don't know if I had it or my uncle had it, but I definitely remember playing this game. And I had seen this uh, popping around now and again, so I, when I saw it, uh, I've actually seen it go for a lot more. I've seen it go for like 50 or so, but when I saw it for 25, I was like, I'm gonna buy this. I think it, yeah, free ship, $25 free shipping. I was like, yeah, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. I'm glad I did. It's been a long time since I've played this game, and it, if you, I, I just realized I haven't really explained the game yet, but it plays a lot like Gauntlet. In fact, it is a Gauntlet clone. But um, you've got spark bombs. You, only two people can play. You're both pretty much... <laughs> you got pretty much the same character that fires the same things. There's no variety in the two characters. You don't have a selection of characters to choose from. Uh, but what's kind of interesting is that you don't... You don't, once you make it from level one to level two, you just don't proceed to level three, level four. I actually had to backtrack back to level one uh, because um, you have to kind of navigate the maze, but the maze also goes between the floors too. So in order to make it to level three, you have to go from one level one to level two, back up to level one through a different set of staircases to find another set of staircases you couldn't access before to get to another part of level two before you could access level three. And it'll go on like that. So a little bit of creativity that way. Uh, another thing I noticed is that, I don't know if there's actually a level, I, you know, I think there's a level out editor bit built into this, but uh, the way this is, you load it up on the, the back side of this first, and then the, the front side is the scenario disc. So I think it maybe at one time they had planned to sell extra scenario discs, um, but I don't think they ever did. I could be wrong on that, but uh, for my um, sake, this is really all I wanted. So that's Demon Stalker. Now lastly is a bit of a cheat. It's a game I already showed in a pickups video, but uh, this particular game didn't, the disc worked, but it was taking forever to load. I had a feeling something was wrong with the disc. So I um, looked up on eBay uh, to see if I could get a disc-only copy of it. And yes, somebody was selling. Actually, I think it was an auction. No, somebody was selling the disc for $3.24 plus shipping. So I wound up getting a disc for um, Championship Wrestling, which is this game right here. So uh, yeah, I loaded it up. Looks much better than the uh, other version I had bought that came with this box but this also came with another manual so I actually have two manuals for the game now um, and a, a working disc so that's really good yeah it's just a wrestling game you've got all I don't know six to eight wrestlers to choose from they do their theme song and kind of face grimaces and then you start wrestling and if you don't know what you're doing the round could be over fairly quickly uh, but 
Yeah, so it's a fun game, I think. It's got uh, so sometimes hard to control, hard to know what you're doing. But I, I kind of had to fumble myself around to be able to pin the first person when he was on the ground. So I just kept kicking him over and over again. And um, actually, it was funny was when I was a kid, I remember the, the ability to jump on the ropes was, and climb up on the ropes and jump from the ropes was um, was awesome to me. <laughs> that and the uh, introductions of the characters, I thought those were pretty cool. So, I'm going to say that's it. That's the video. Uh, I'm going to actually film another one right after this for the DVDs and Blu-rays that I've picked up. But that'll be a separate video. And then I have a separate video for, look at this, I got... There's 3DS games, PS Vita games, even a Saturn game, uh, PS4, yeah, uh, those just need to be a separate video, I think. So I think I'll just divide out this video separately. I kind of want to get all these out before April 10th because that's around when uh, Midwest Gaming Classic is and I want to have a separate video for whatever I pick up from that. So, thanks everyone for watching. Till next time. Bye.